course, it's 6.32, so we'll go ahead and get started with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we will begin tonight by uh, administering the oath of office to Carl. He was unable to make our last meeting where we swore everybody else in. Do you want us to be in any certain location? Can we do it right here? Okay. We need to get in front of. Yes, your hand raising and just reading the whole thing. I do solemnly swear. I, Carl Rudy, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of member of the Board of Education of North Boone Community Unit School District, District in accordance with the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and the laws of the State of Illinois, to the best of my ability. I further swear that I shall respect taxpayer interests by serving as a faithful protector of the school district's assets. I shall encourage and respect the free expression of opinion by my fellow board members and others who seek a hearing before the board while respecting the privacy of students and employees. I shall recognize that a board member has no legal authority as an individual and that decisions can only be made by a majority vote at a, board, a public board meeting. I shall abide by majority decisions of the board while retaining the right to seek changes in such decisions through ethical and constructive channels. As part of the Board of Education, I shall accept the responsibility for my role in the equitable and quality uh, education of every student in the school district. I shall foster the board extensive I shall foster with the board extensive participation of the community, formulate goal goals, define outcome, sorry, of the community, formulate goals, define outcomes, and set the course of North Boone Community Unit School District. I shall assist in establishing a structure and an environment design to ensure all students have the opportunity to attain their maximum potential through a sound organizational framework. I shall strive to ensure a continuous assessment of student achievement in all conditions affecting the education of our children in compliance with state law. I shall serve as education's key advocate on behalf of students and our community's school to advance the vision for North Boone Community Unit School District. I shall strive to work together with the district superintendent to lead the district toward fulfilling the vision the board has created, fostering excellence for every student in the areas of academic skills, knowledge, citizenship, and personal development. Well said, sir. Congratulations. <laughs> He's used to public speaking. All right, that taken care of. Roll call, please, Kelly. Mr. Hazelhorst? Here. Mr. Haverly? Yes. Mr. Kinzer? Here. Mrs. Maxey? Here. Mr. Moon? Mr. Mulholland? Here. Mr. Rudy? Here. All right. Um, do we have anybody interested in changing anything about the agenda? If not, could I have a motion and a second, please? Make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Second. We have a Motion by Hazelhorst and a second by Maxi. Roll call, please, Kelly. Mr. Hazelhorst? Yes. Mr. Haverly? Yes. Mr. Kinzer? Yes. Mrs. Maxi? Yes. Mr. Mulholland? Yes. Mr. Rudy? Yes. Motion passes. We have no audience to visitors cards. Did anybody come in late and want an audience to visitor card? All right. Hearing none, we'll move on to treasurer report. Make a motion to approve yes. the treasurer's reports as presented. Do we have a second? We have a motion by Maxi and a second by Hazel Horst. Roll call, please, Kelly. Mr. Haverly? Yes. Mr. Kinzer? Yes. Mrs. Maxi? Yes. Mr. Mulholland? Yes. Mr. Rudy? Yes. Mr. Hazelhorst? Yes. The motion passes. Brings us to item number seven, superintendent's report. I'd like to first start by introducing Carrie Neary, our new curriculum director. Carrie? You're welcome. And Hello, also Jared Peterson, our new upper elementary principal. So welcome to both of you guys. Thank you guys for being here tonight. Um, 
Also want to let the board know that our online registration is off and running. Uh, we've got over 100 people. Um, I will email principals tomorrow about seeing other ways that we can encourage more online registration before the school year gets out here. So um, in years past, uh, with mail-in registration, we ran some contests. Maybe we can come up with something creative to push some more online registration before everybody takes off for summer. Um, last night, our seniors graduated from the high school. The ceremony went very, very well, and I want to thank Brian, uh, Joe, and Mary for their participation in the event. May 30th is the middle school graduation. Um, it'll be held also at the high school. This Thursday is Poplar Grove Spring Concert at the high school. And June 3rd is um, uh, our end of the year district breakfast for uh, put on by the NBA and it recognizes all of our years of service for 5, 10, 15, 20s and any of our people that are retiring. So any board members that would like to come to any of those, we always, uh, always love it when you do and encouraging you guys to participate in those. Uh, if, if we can so um, one last thing we've had on the agenda for quite a while after inspections and camera scopes the architect and the civil engineer felt that the sewer connections do not need to be addressed at this time that they will last a while longer um, it'll be something we'll need to keep an eye on and monitor but at this point they did not feel that the Poplar Grove sewer lines needed to be replaced so um, one of the things I'd like to do though is uh, it doesn't mean we don't have more things to do. Um, I want to kind of keep picking off some of our items that are on the 10 year uh, plan. So uh, I, could, I suppose I could work with Tom and Joe on that regarding those next items in line. We've got a lot of items that can still get moved forward even though the sewer lines aren't going to be addressed now. So we'll continue on. That's all I have. Any other questions for Mike? Any clarifications? If not, thank you, Mike. We'll move on to item number eight, committee reports. Policy committee, do you have anything for us? Uh, we actually met earlier today, and we're going to have the policies in the next board packet because nobody would have had time to review them before today's meeting. But we did meet, um, and so you'll see them in the June packet. All right. Any questions for Mary? Thank you, Mary. That brings us to business services. I'll report. Right. Thank you, Ed. Facilities and long range planning. No? We haven't met. Okay. And CIA. We have not met with the Dan region. All right. Okay. Thank you. That finishes our committee report. And that brings us to the consent agenda. I need a motion to approve the consent agenda containing the minutes of the special meeting of April 17th, the minutes of the regular meeting of April 23rd and May 10th, special meeting of May 10th, personnel, approval of the IASB annual dues, the group eight program requests at the high school, athletic training agreement, set date for budget hearing amendment, and then CNC IGA resolution. Can I have a motion and a second, please? for the consent agenda. Make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Thank you, Mary. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Rudy. Roll call, please, Kelly. Mr. Kinzer? Yes. Mrs. Maxey? Yes. Mr. Mahone? Yes. Mr. Rudy? Yes. Mr. Hazelwood? <coughs> yes. Mr. Haverly? Yes. Motion passes. Brings us to unfinished business, the technology purchases. Yeah, um, this proposal was presented at the board, and uh, it's the exact, uh, well, I guess the PowerPoint is slightly changed. We pulled a few things out. Um, uh, it includes computers for staff at the high school, additional devices for the UE, and replacement devices at the middle school. Um, in this recommendation here, we're talking about technology purchases, but we're looking through the leasing plan to uh, move some of those um, devices towards one-to-one -one at five through eight, uh, and then growing uh, devices for the staff at the high school in preparation towards um, growing devices the following year at the high school. Um, a few of the things that, that we've talked a lot about, uh, and again, back to the instructional side of things, uh, a lot of our series, the iScience, the HMH Math, which is the Go Math, and what's our new one now? The Into Math. Um, pushes a lot of uh, 
technology type programs that enhance differentiation back towards the classroom, towards our uh, learners for differentiation and even for individual learning, whether you're accelerated or students that are struggling and need interventions. So many of these programs are really uh, using the technology side to reach more kids. So again, this is something we're looking to grow differentiation, we're looking to grow student engagement, support the resources that we've brought in. Um, the last time too, we we talked about you know what what are the uh, uh, what are the reasons that we're looking to do that. And again, it's you're you're looking to push that instructional academic gain towards those kids, whether it's student engagement, whether it's differentiation. Um, uh, we've got Melissa here that is going to break down some of the leasing structures versus the buying, so we can let the board have discussion through that. Jerry has also looked into the warranty side. Um, I've had a chance now to talk with Carrie a little more, uh, even through professional development and what our instructional goals would be towards uh, growing devices in our classroom. So, um, Carrie, I don't know if you and I have talked quite a bit about it, and gosh, you said it so much better than I did when you talked about it, but um, if you wanted to share a little bit about just your views and how this enhances instruction in the classroom and even how it affects teachers. Sure. So I think um, in moving, you know, kind of to this, a device for every student in the classroom, um, what we can really do is give them the opportunity to um, not only show us what they know in different ways, like we can really utilize the technology um, and support teachers in how to assess students in different ways through different technology platforms. Um, but we can also then work with teachers on how to tailor their instruction um, and differentiate that instruction for small group settings. Um, to really help students grow in the areas that they need to grow. And so we can use student data, um, not only from our large scale assessments like IAR and um, SAT, but also from our MAP assessment um, that we give three times a year uh, for our younger kids, and I know two times a year as they get older, but um, to really differentiate and target those areas where they need to grow um, in order to see that academic growth and that academic achievement. So um, I think it's, it would really help us move towards that. Um, yes, we would have to work on that professional development piece, which we talked a little bit about. Um, and then I think also utilizing Schoology that I know we have in the upper elementary and middle school. That's a great platform that we already have and that some teachers are already using that we can then leverage um, and use more with our students and that can support that differentiation and assessment as well. You know, Jared, you guys, I believe, also are one-to-one -one up in South Beloit, right? Sure, yeah. And I, I'm catching you totally off guard. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, and I, this just dawned on me. That's sad when my ideas pop to head like this. Um, and I know I've talked to Mr. Fisher, and Mr. Uh, Mr. Fisher has said, you know, a lot of the things that they saw really focused on differentiation and student engagement. Um, yeah, I think that's the big piece is the differentiation part uh, because you can do online small assessments or large assessments, uh, whether it's for did they learn throughout the course of the year, did they learn today's lesson, uh, and then you can use that information to decide what you're going to do next year. So even if it's a you know, simple day-to-day -day thing, uh, as a, like a little five-question quiz at the uh, end of class, well then there's a couple ways you can go about getting that information. It's okay guys, share your papers, we're going to grade them, and you're taking away from instructional time. Or a teacher is going through you know, 120 little quizzes and that's taken a lot of time out of their day when they couldn't be working on uh, lesson planning and targeting with different students and things like that. So um, th that's that's been the real key for us is giving giving the teachers um, you know things like map scores, which are really useful, so we can get those target skills and, and um, work with kids that way. But it's also really good for the for the day to day um, getting information and uh, freeing up a lot of time for teachers to. To them instead of grade things or plan things that are going to be useful in the next day's lesson. And nice job. I usually try to never target you like that and, and throw you on a spot like that. But it's made of <laughs> <laughs> But I appreciate it. Is there any other you have to add? And how many, I, I, and Mr. Fisher did invite us if we ever wanted to take a, a tour up there. He said he'd be more than happy to set some time aside if anybody wanted to see the one-to-one -one program working up there. How many years have you guys had it now? Are you in year four or five? I, I want to say it's been about five. Five? Because I know uh, the last two years uh, as an history of the when I was still in the classroom, we had one. I want to say mm -hmm. And it became, um, you know, it didn't consume you know, 45 minutes because you're still asking kids to be engaged in what uh, the teacher is 
we're doing with, with new material, uh, the kids with all that assessment and information are going to be asked to be in groups more often because they're going to have more free time to do that instead of you know, taking us on a job. Um, so it's really changed the way that teachers structure their lessons. So you, you, you worry that you're going to get these devices in front of the kids. It's just, okay, kid, stare at the screen for an hour and call it a day. Uh, but that hasn't been the case at all. Uh, if anything, it's promoted a lot more Thank you. Yeah. Um, any other instructional side? Because we, I'd like to talk the leasing side and then the warranty, because those were also questions there too. And for the leasing side, I'll, I'll turn that to Melissa. You've kind of looked heavily into that, and we started that. And part of this is what we're trying to do. Um, to We had a question at the last meeting about uh, how the, or do the devices need to be insured. Um, so I asked the leasing company about that and said as long as we have public liability insurance, which is just our regular insurance for fires, tornadoes, floods, all that, um, we would be covered. Or they, they were okay with that. Um, I also did look into accidental and uh, four-year coverage for the devices um, that we just pay extra for. Um, out of my three quotes uh, would be about $78 per device to get the accidental um, insurance on them. And so for all 465 of those devices, it would be about $36,000 that we need to spend right away um, just to get that on there. Um, I look through what I've spent on laptop, laptop parts um, over the past couple of years. And it really hasn't been that much. Uh, we did spend a little bit more uh, this year due to an odd issue that we had with our uh, power buttons. So we spent roughly about $7,000 <coughs> district-wide on laptop repair parts. Um, but Was that this year? or Just this year. Just so this far, year. Yeah. Uh, we spent less last year, spent about 2000 less last year on, those same, or on the same uh, Line item when it comes to laptop parts. Uh, this year we received about $920 back from the students who paid for half the repairs of that, $7,000. Uh, so 
there any questions on any of that? I think in summary, kind of when we talked about it through the tech team, the cost of what that plan would be was far more than they felt the actual cost of repairs and their time. And when I talked to them about their time, they didn't see that as a big, huge overtaking. They, they felt like the plan would be more <coughs> expensive than their time and then the actual cost of the repair from the tech team. Wasn't one of the questions that was raised that if we're leasing them, that that shouldn't be our responsibility? I, I think, like, yeah. Uh, no, that if anything, if you're leasing something and shouldn't it be the some, it would be whoever, whoever leasing leases it through it. that that more than likely you, they would just swap you out or something like that. And we would just fix it just like any other device. So it doesn't at least. But it doesn't. Uh, doesn't. I work think that with way. those leases, they won't. It, they won't mean, cover breakage like a, a, a no. like some of your breakage. You oh, drop it. You a dollar buyout too. So okay. I think at least we give them four hundred sixty dollars and five dollars and. But I'm right on that, though. If we if a student breaks the screen, like a lot of times we'll see, they they put close the notebook in the screen, cracks the screen. They those those, uh, those warranties won't cover those types of things, right? Right, Jerry. Well, the accidental would if we did purchase that, but like the oh, they would. Manufacturer one-year warranty would not. Gotcha. So that'd be a good $26 a okay. okay. I I realized we might have a semantic issue here. I was thinking just like the device functioning not a student breaking it, oh, okay. but it just functioning. If something goes wrong, I'm assuming with the lease. It's our, <coughs> well, after the one year manufacturer warranty, it would be our. That would be ours. Um, okay. But I did have that included on all the four year um, epidemics. So like say if the battery went bad or the motherboard went bad, um, that would be covered with, with you know, that $78 per device um, for four years. Good question. With that extra insurance, yes. it's breakage and, and okay. Then three years of. You know. okay. Is there a deductible with the any claims on that? Zero deductible. So the, all the deductibles were fifty dollars, and so I figured, you know, what part of this is fifty dollars? The only part that's more than fifty dollars on these Chromebooks is the motherboard. So that'd be one thing. I did find a vendor that will repair the motherboards for I think it was around thirty-five dollars. If they would go bad, we do have an option. So just a functional question, but um, do we have the infrastructure in place to, I assume these devices won't last all day, so if we're charging devices in the middle of the day, are we going to get our fourth period <coughs> these standing devices, in the back of the classroom trying to... They are awesome. They last, I think, it's like 13, 14 hours. So for the first three years, I don't see any problem with them lasting all day. Um, the plan for these are to keep them at school, so they will be charged nightly uh, at this point. Um, and so for a couple years, until the battery degrades, we shouldn't have any problem with that. We're, we're on year four with the current device. Our oldest ones are year four um, in the seventh and eighth grade, and they're just now starting to show signs of where, um, where a teacher will be more mindful of the students to you know, shut them down um, you know, at lunchtime or in their PE class. Uh, Instead of just leave them on, they won't last all day. And that's after four years of these devices. Stuff has gotten a lot better, especially with these new ones. They're a lot mobile, a lot more low voltage than the current ones that we have, and uh, much more redefined um, as far as the, the drop points. Um, I think we're, we're at about 12 more inches of drop point with this new device than we would the old device. So we're pretty excited to make. And the older devices we have in seventh and eighth, correct me if I'm wrong, are Windows devices. They are Windows devices. Not devices. Chromebooks. Yeah. So. so a little different device there too. Yeah, a lot less maintenance with the phone. Um, you know, it's basically just a browser. But uh, you know, we, we can push different extensions to it, and then eventually we will be able to push apps to it. But at this point, we're just using the extension for the browser. Any questions? Yeah. 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 I was just there's okay. Those are the devices we're talking about. Jerry, when you had the um, seven thousand dollar figure for this year, how many devices was that over the end of the high school teacher? There's I didn't count the devices. I just counted this. Those screens, desktops, um, this would keyboards, to batteries, and then a few other miscellaneous parts. Okay. Take it home with it. But the assumption would be is that if you get more devices, 
if you had 465 devices this year, you would have thought you'd see higher than 7,000, right? If you had a smaller install yeah. base and you have 7,000. Um, just, I happen to have a, um, an unplanned conversation with, would be your counterpart at another school. I believe they're a one-to-one, -one, primarily with Chromebooks, and they're on a four-year replacement schedule. They, it's like fifth grade, ninth grade. Um, I don't know, if would South Boyd be something close to that, or is that, that's it, that's a four-year? That's replacement schedule for them. Um, was that school taking them home, or? I think they were taking them, the yeah. older kids, I think, were taking them home. Not 100% sure on that, but the, yeah, the four-year warranty and stuff like that, it was, um, that seemed to be the best trade-off for them in, in kind of doing it things. So it would seem to me like to think on a Chromebook that you're going to go it's more than be, four years to be kind of, you'd be, be pushing it. This uh, brand new device, they're, they're saying six. six. Um, yeah, that's how long it's going to It's the first one ever for them to put that on there. Usually it's about four or five years. And uh, they're, they're saying six years as a new device. Yes. It's completely different than any other um, Chromebook that's ever been out as far as durability and being at school or designed for schools. So our hope is to get four with the one one and then move it to an elementary. Joe asked me like what happens with all of our older middle school ones the ones that are still good and can be used will disperse those out to elementaries and to high schools because there's still good laptop devices available and some of our st older stuff then in our uh, middle or in our elementary schools and our high school then would be recycled out um, the ones then that we are getting ready to throw away at the end of the year. I believe you guys go through a recycler, right? Yeah. Um, and have them come and take our old stuff and recycle. Yeah, we'll probably, well, we're gonna find all the good ones, and then the bad ones are gonna be- We'll part, part them out. Yeah, you know, jump ready to go through and take parts out. Because we did, I did forget to mention, um, some of those replacement parts were the spinning hard drives, the traditional hard drive, and we did upgrade those to the non-spinning uh, SSDs. So we'll have a ton of those to move around the district, uh, wherever there's need, plus, all the other parts within the device. And I believe the screen in those devices is pretty universal as far as a lot of the other devices we have around the district. We have only have like two different screens um, that move across all the different brands of student laptops. And so if a screen were to break, we could take one of those older ones, or one of the ones that we take from the seventh grade graders and use that screen. So that's I'm just curious, Jerry, is there a company we work with that comes and takes them all apart and takes out the precious metals and is that at all valuable to Absolutely. us or is that just <laughs> that's how they do it. I mean they wouldn't they wouldn't come and take them out if there wasn't some sort of value and so yeah. um I don't know if they, if they get the gold here. I know that they, they sniff off the gold um, areas of the computers and then they might send it to another country to process but that's the value is is in the metals, especially the, the gold all all the main um, points inside of a computer are real gold. And there's a few other ones that there's like only people. We don't just dump on those, but I no, want to no, hear no. you say. Oh, no. <laughs> they don't just go in a dumpster, no, right? I, there's I, some no. sort of system that works there. Yeah, they take them all apart and get the, the precious metals and then recycle the rest of the taxes. Recycle, that's what I wanted to hear. Yeah. All right, any other questions? Is there anything else <clears throat> to present? <coughs> So I guess I continue to be underwhelmed by the presentation. Mary and I had the privilege of Jared of being at one of your South Beloit board meetings and listen to the admin team sit and talk about the data that they pulled off their devices and how they used it to drive curriculum, how they understood on a Friday that on Monday that the data told them that the kids weren't where they need to be, where you guys anticipated where we were going to be on MAP scores ahead of time, where you, where you anticipated where you were going to be on PS and whatever all the jargon is for all the testing. We don't have any of those kinds of conversations as we talk about spending over $100,000 to go down this path. And I, it's, it still disappoints me. I wanted the curriculum director to be on board and talk about differentiation and stuff. We don't talk about what we're going to do with the data. There's never We never have that conversation. I mean, I, I've for four years, I think I've talked about this, exactly the same thing, wanting to understand how we're going to use this technology to drive the academic function of, of where we as a group think we should be. And we're not having those conversations. This just feels like 
you know, we, we need Chromebooks because everybody else has them. And we don't have a conversation about what we're going to do with them. So I'm, I'm disappointed. Could anybody speak to that? Molly, you were talking a little bit last time about HMH and the assessments that come with it that were built in. Can I, I know I'm putting you on a spot, and, and Ed has asked. Yeah. Can you speak to that better? I, I mean, just because I don't see it in the classroom every day. And I haven't seen this particular mm -hmm. assessment, but I know these are benchmark assessments that are given three times a year, and that's just to know, you know what kind of track we're on. Mm -hmm. And I, I think back to when I watched it in one classroom with a teacher that used it phenomenally. Um, when the kids broke out, she broke them out into five, five different small groups. Every kid went to, it, it was math in this case, and whatever program they were working on, was, that program was tailor-made to whatever their previous assessment was that showed some of their weaknesses um, in, in whatever skill it was, if it was fractions. So one group might be working on fractions. Somebody else was working on something else that they were struggling with. Some of the stronger kids were differentiating up with something that was more advanced. And um, that was what I remembered in one of my elementary classes there. And I, that was what blew me away. Um, the kids that were, the differentiation that went on in that classroom. And that's what I see uh, me wanting to get at. But those individual programs for whatever the math series that they were using, which I think was Envision at that time in Belvedere, um, what uh, the teacher did, every one of them was tailor-made to whatever the kid had previously done. So they were all working on something differently. I think that was the thing that was actually the most impressive. I don't think the presentation was about software. It was just, it about, was just about how, how they used it yeah. mm -hmm. to, to drive the value back. And those conversations must have taken place as organized right. as the presentation was that we watched that night. Those conversations took place before they probably bought devices. Mm -hmm. you know, for us, we have a school that rocks it this year, but we need 30 days to try and understand what happened because we were surprised, seemingly by Allison's successes at Capron. That shouldn't have been a, a surprise to us, should it? I don't think so. I mean, I think there had to be factors out there that people understood, you know, if we were using the data the right way that we were going to have a school that rocked it this year. And, you know, I've seen those presentations made by Yorkville, I've seen made by Byron. You know, they understand. There's no surprises that when, the, when, you take the state, when those school districts take the state testing, they already know where they're going to be. It's just a validation of where they, their data already took them down. 
I'm in, the, I'm in the technology sales business too. My customers would not accept these kinds of arguments. I want you to put $60,000 worth of technology in your tractor or combine. Why? You know, well, we're going to do this. We can do this. We can do this. We have all those conversations about what they want to do with the data first before we try to tell them to sell them the technology. So I, I get it. You know, it, it just, it just turn in, it's going to turn into an argument. But um, I think it's a disappointing opportunity to really embrace technology to help us move the academic needle of the school district forward if we're not willing to engage in these conversations. Um, I don't know how we're, we're going to get there. I think, Ed, you might be worried that we don't have a system in place once we have these devices that, that like a learning management system. But we have our student tracking system. We do have Schoology. So we, we just, maybe we just haven't heard about it. Is that? I think it's just that we haven't heard about it. I mean, okay. every day the seven day three teachers meet together and they go over um, what was going on in, you know, that, the, the following day, the previous day, um, in all the classes. And then they talk about how they can build upon that. I've never <coughs> sat down with Mike. And maybe I just made a note to myself. Maybe we should. You created a technology plan, but I, I think what Ed's maybe struggling with is we still can't see that, oh yeah, we already do. And you say Schoology and I say learning management system and we talk about common assessment and the textbooks, hopefully they're on a different system, but it syncs with Schoology, I'm assuming, I'm hoping. Okay, maybe not. Okay, and, and they'll be able to create assessments and they'll all be on the same system. I think maybe part of the problem is we still don't see that all together and yet. And yeah. so maybe I should sit down with him and go, this is at least what I think I'm talking about. And then maybe Ed, once we Ed's, have something, we can sit down. I and believe Ed, Ed is go. really speaking to that implementation of what's happening to the classroom. We don't, we don't want to just, it might feel like we're just buying devices. And what Ed's speaking to is where I want us to be. Yeah, that is right. what I want us to be. And I, I'm very visual. I'd like to see that, okay, yeah, we've already thought about cords. You just made me think about cords. Like, for some reason, we don't have cords at the college. I have no idea why. They must be really expensive. Uh, but we have to share cords. And um, But, you know, that we've thought about hardware and software and learning management systems and common assessments. And... Ultimately, definitely, <coughs> we have some carry some uh, data that you can start pre presenting maybe perhaps relatively soon and maybe already, maybe it already exists in Schoology where we could see this is sort of what we're talking about if you want to see it. This is what a learning management system would look like to a teacher and here's what it would look like to a student. That might that might be, I don't know, I, might, I don't want to speak for Ed, but that might be part of the problem is I don't still think we have the technology plan I envisioned where we see all the How does this coming impact together the instruction yeah. because this is an awful lot of money and this is an awful lot of money this is pretty similar to what our budget's been for the past what, four years yeah I have not raised the placeholder the placeholder has been similar you know um, and I don't know if anybody else can speak, Jared or even Carrie, if you guys can speak to the how how you get to that implementation of it to the classroom, you know, where you, where you're really using the data. And, and to be honest with you, that is where I'm looking to try to get to. We've got to get to it. We haven't had good structure there yet. That's where we've got to strengthen so that you're using that data, that student feedback data, to then really impact the instruction and the next steps to move the needle. We'll need to come in and do and this is where I'm coming in and I don't know what is currently here yet um, so what part of that curriculum plan will need to be it for our district is to really create those common assessments that our students will be taking that are really district-wide um, and so that way I mean we have map um, but we also need shorter smaller assessments you know map is only given three times a year um, or two times a year because we don't always give that full assessment we don't want to over assess our students either um, you know, we have to be careful with that. And so if we can create those small common assessments that teachers can give, um, I think that, Ed, that that would help give you what you need um, to be able to say, here is what our students, how they're performing on these small checkups, and now how can we quickly get that data? And if we use technology to do that, we can turn that around more quickly than if a teacher has to grade everything by hand or sort all of their students by hand. 
Um, and then how do we in, you know, change our instructional model or how do we improve our instructional model or how do we enhance, because um, depending on where we are in our different buildings, to really be able to then use that. Um, and I think one of the things that will really help us with that is to come in and really work with our teams of teachers on how to create those common assessments so they're the ones that are really learning how to do that. Um, and then how to then use that data to, to tweak their instruction. Um, and really doing that with <coughs> professional learning communities or teams of teachers. I mean, so I think if we can, but we have to build those first, and we don't have them yet. Um, and so we'd have, that's really part of that curriculum work, is building those common assessments and getting them into the system so teachers can use them. And then the next step that I see is us setting that tone for um, those instructional conversations that enhance better teaching. You know, and, and that's when the teachers get together. And that's where we've got to get to. And I know that's abstract. So what we're asking for, though, tonight are, are the devices. We've already got a learning management system. We've already got a curriculum coordinator who will coordinate all of this. And we, are, we already have teachers who are ready to give these short in-class assessments, maybe at the end of the week, maybe even every day, depending on what the teacher is. All of that is already in place. Now you're just asking us to buy the devices. might help because I'm not sure we've seen that and maybe Ed's not sure we have that either. And I, th or I think we're still abstract on then how does this look inside the classroom with discussion. Did you want this to be I much more anybody increased? say that we have common in district grade by grade assessments? We, we, I think we soon will if I'm understanding them correctly and I think like from the point of a teacher once I'm in my learning management system I, and I create an assessment or we all sit down and write an assessment, I can share it with other classes, other teachers, individual, just a Google, like a Google Doc, you can sort of share it. And to that, be developed. And it will be power schools, uh, data is user friendly. And like we've thought about like what it will look like, it'll be useful to us. It won't be a bunch of obscure numbers or anything. The Excel spreadsheet, it won't be that. Okay, good. And can Schoology really differentiate? Like, I'm trying to think, could I differentiate? And I, so, I don't think I can differentiate on my learning management system. But it does if, because you assign certain things to certain kids. So you get your feedback from, okay. your, from your data. I know these kids need this, I'm gonna assign, I have these three. I could assignments. create different modules and tell you to go into module one and you right. in module two. Okay, right. so that way I could, all right. We do have other software too. Based upon you know, if they answer this question and this question, this question wrong, and this question right, so you create a custom learning path for them to get those other questions they got wrong uh, right. And it does from a work together to I'll at least share what I'm thinking visually and the other piece of that is is it kind of flows to the calendar for the school of which I created next year too is we have SIP days in October and April which is the small district one but then in September I think it's November uh, January and March I've created late start days so that those are some of those meetings for subjects departments um, uh, grade levels where that instructional conversation that data can be looked at that's got to be the, the next piece to help like I said foster those conversations that goes, goes along with the common assessments All right any further questions so we're be looking to get a vote here to Today, what, what I would hope for is a vote tonight and if it doesn't pass you know that's the board's choice but what what we would do is look to get the vote tonight because if I delay it any further we don't have it to start the school year um, uh, and I know that uh, to start the school year by the time we get them shipped because it takes a little while I believe they come from overseas most of the time 
and then by the time they get him imaged and ready to go to the classroom, this still gives us a window of time to be up and functional for the start of school, as long as everything comes in on time. Mm -hmm. I, was, I, I spoke with the middle school and upper elementary teachers at the board goals meeting, and they just kept going back to needing more devices, and that was that was their primary primary concern. And my upper elementary teachers are, I mean, they're 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 ready to go with more devices. They would love to have them. They have sought out and asked us for professional development towards Schoology, and have even asked if we they could do some of it on their time. Uh, this summer, where we did something with them for professional development with Schoology towards this summer. And the high school that was teachers as well expressed that they would um, appreciate more devices and, and be able to use them if they had more. But that's really the challenge for us, right? The group of teachers that I sat with, this conversation never came up. One of the biggest elementary schools that we have in the district that never came up. They're concerned about class size. Mm -hmm. We talk about class sports talking about social emotional needs so we haven't really even had that discussion we spend this morning here what, what do we got left to give the teachers that in some of these other buildings what they're looking for I, I absolutely agree I mean this is I think this proposal is within the budget that we've, we've already had so I I don't think it's unreasonable but we actually absolutely need to address those other concerns too absolutely. Mm -hmm. Tom, you've been awful quiet. We'll give people time to think, and I'll put you in the hot seat. Do you have anything to add or share? Thoughts? I guess I'm looking at this more on the, not on the angles that um, that you folks are looking at. I'm looking at the costs and the budget and those pieces like that. So um, it comes down to if this is the way we want to go. I'm still looking at the lease versus outright purchase and warranties and stuff like that which i think is still a discussion piece so uh, now the recommendation was to lease so do you do you feel strongly perhaps we should consider buying i think thirteen thousand in interest is thirteen thousand and do we have the cash to buy it it's um i I would lean towards buying, and I would lean much probably the same thought in my mind like when we looked at the school buses this year and leasing and things. And I also look at the warranty piece that um, I think given Chromebooks and um, I don't know about the part about not letting the kids take them home or the students take them home. Um, if that all has to do with the breakage piece of it and things like that, but I. I guess I'm looking more on that on that side of it. So I'd lean towards mine. I would lean towards the agreement and you tell me what it would look like on the budget. Um, I mean, that's 13,000 towards a 36,000 warranty replacement. Um, so. Melissa, would you want not to put you also, I'm gonna just put everybody in the hot speed tonight. Uh, would you be able to speak to any of his concerns or the rationale, the recommendation, if I believe, was to lease? Uh, when you weighed all of those, why did you fall towards the leasing? And the leasing was so that we didn't have to pay for the That's just the first year. Yeah, that's right. And that would be if we purchase outright and provide for eight to nine high school teachers. Those two things would be about $35,000. New money, so new money would not spend to that option for. If we lease the 5 8 purchase the high school, we would be within the budget that we spent. So that was my, my goal is how can we get more devices in the kids' hands? Yes, for $2,000. And I agree with you that that is a concern. Um, but but if you're disciplined in years two, three, and four, you pull back money that you could potentially underspend your spend under. So. Because we know like our elementary schools don't necessarily need potential. 
I, I guess what I'm saying is, in the example that you had on the lease, yeah. you're looking at holding the technology with your budget numbers in years two, three, and four. Yeah. Um, so if you don't spend the money, or if you spend the money up front, we would still expect that you're going to hold the technology purchases. Or And not lease. Mm. Is that perhaps an easier discussion to have? Carl, do you have an opinion about the purchase versus lease? Mary, do you have thoughts on purchase the um, direction I, we go versus the I would have a tendency to agree with the guys over there that just purchasing it and avoiding the <coughs> finance charges if, if we can if we can do that. Right. Ed, do you have any oh, normally leases work when they save you money. So this is not normally space. And Melissa, if we went that direction, you'd still be comfortable with that, with the understanding we'd pull, rein ourselves in years to come, two, three years, two, three, and four, if we purchased outright. Yeah, so this should be the go back to that. Okay. We'll add one comment, cost adjacent here. Please. Um, that I resonate with Ed, and that I would say as we get closer to potentially voting on this I would want to articulate a pretty clear statement for me uh, that we revisit and continue to review the technology use in the classroom, especially as we introduce these new devices in, um, you know, as we see what that fall semester has brought and how teachers are implementing them in the classroom. I'd like to see clearer feedback, and especially with the new curriculum directing position, uh, that that comes back to the board and that they really see where the rubber's being road and how those numbers are being used. And that. The other piece Carrie and I talked about was working with ECRA to see if there was a way of doing something with a variable about introducing tech to tracking data with our data warehouse. So that was a conversation we were going to have with them too. We don't know what that looks like, but if we talk to those, the, the ones that work with the metrics, we're hoping that maybe they've had some way of defining how to do that too. So even if there's a way to track data. But no, that, I, I would agree with that too. I, I would ask Carrie again. Carrie, I, maybe the, the concern is the cart before the horse, and you feel comfortable <coughs> that we, we aren't going to be in that position, that we'll soon be collecting data. The, okay. I think so. I mean, yes, based on my limited knowledge of what we currently have, but I think that there's going to be a lot if this becomes a priority in the upcoming school year and we, we focus our efforts on really supporting the teachers with understanding how to use Schoology and how to build those kind of assessments in there and how to share that data and since our upper elementary and middle school teachers have their team time where they can really talk about data for their students um, I think that's a great place where we can leverage you know that leverage that time to then be having those conversations around um, student growth and then student achievement We shifted gears back to the general moving forward, purchasing the cart. Mm -hmm. I guess I shouldn't say that because there are electronic <laughs> carts too. Uh, purchasing, moving forward. Any any other thoughts on that? I also I'll say I was at Manchester and Ma at Manchester the technology was wasn't a main concern. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure they are not. I don't can't speak for them, but I don't assume they're opposed to technology. I just don't think that they see a great need for it at their school. Eight every year, every room has been fundraised for some additional homeworks that are custom to me right now. And I know they're pretty happy with having that. Originally, it was four of you, but I think more than four now. Because I said, we're going to have 
Yes. And that was through PTO, right? Um, the eight was with the purchase. They ended up getting eight based on the purchase last year. Oh, gotcha. We have an additional card and I was instead of having a card based on the classrooms. And that way, every classroom has that opportunity They did articulate a desire for more time. So that was something that came up and pretty short to our meeting. Um, yes. That they, they are, yeah, they just seem to be pretty desirable uh, commodities and like, at least in the building. And that's what you're going to see is as the students get older, their screen time increases because what they can use for their education, for that differentiating um, increases as they get older. Our little ones, our kindergartners, first graders, we're not gonna have them in front of a screen as much, or, or they're not gonna be using the technology the same way a seventh or eighth grader will. And so more time is spent using our Chromebooks by our third and fourth graders and some of our second graders. We, we too have, I mean, we're about two to one um, students to computers or those uh, Chromebooks in our building, but we also have some more retired tablets that um, we kept on. Um, so we have six, seven tablets um, in each of our classrooms. So the teachers are utilizing those during their center time or during certain activities. Sometimes they're publishing within the classroom rather than going all the way to the computer lab with those desktop computers. I guess since it's during discussion, I'll just say I don't know where the vote is going to go, but I too am very concerned that we're that we're moving forward when we don't have all of our ducks in a row and I haven't seen it. So I have serious reservations doing this. I think it can be incredibly useful. I think someday it will be incredibly useful. I think the diverse, diversification which came out of our um, review of our curriculum shows that we need to we need diversification. I think this can be great. I'll say I'm, I'm concerned of moving forward, that maybe we're moving forward too quickly. We haven't decided that this is gonna be a goal for the year. And this seems like one of those things that maybe would be a goal. Um, but that said, I'm gonna trust uh, our curriculum current director and our um, IT director and our superintendent and our admin that's here and hope that we will be seeing very quickly the collection of that data and the presentations of that data and, soon we'll feel like all right yeah that was the right decision and not just sort of be always waiting like is this is this the right decision and because we're going to be asked again for another chunk of money uh, and i'll still be i hope i won't be going like well is it even working and then asking carrie carrie you know we've been in this a year and here's another three hundred thousand or whatever it is that we're looking at for a year so i, I just wanted to voice my reservations and i'm sure you guys understand those uh, since <coughs> we're sort of in charge of the money and there's a chance that people will go like why did you do that uh, but i'm also going to trust that you guys have thought this through and this is the direction that you think we should go uh, but i am going to work with mike on a plan uh, and so that we can see it that's my two cents anybody else and do we have if no other discussion mary did you want to chime in on that no i'm good Ed, do you have feelings on purchases and over leasing or Pardon? do you have any do you have uh, feelings on purchasing <coughs> or leasing or no I, I i feel like if, if, we, if you're going to go on a leasing path it's because it saves you money this one probably doesn't wouldn't save you any money so if somebody were to make a motion it would not be so here for the leasing i think yeah so it would be leased to purchase is a amended purchase yeah, or <coughs> Do you have the number for the full purchase price? Yeah, so to purchase the, uh, the, there's a recognition of the 40 that talks about his 
school for the teachers, which is about 38,000. And then the new middle school devices was 120. So it's about $167,000 for the devices, which is about 35,000. And that's if you don't do a extended warranty. So my rough numbers on the extended warranty is it's just under a 20% cost. You said it was about what you had found was $78? $70 per device, yes. So not counting the laptops. So you're just talking phone books, just right? Phone books. So over the life, if that well roughly 20 percent of the devices would be is the school year six months somewhere around that you'd be looking at about four devices a month broken roughly coming in do you think you have that much in 465 yeah i mean probably not at first unless there was neglect but over you know, probably within the second or third year we'd start seeing a few more issues coming in it would seem to me one to two a week would be accidental breakage would seem like a we have we have a lot of breakage this year they, they came later in the year so okay. at first we didn't really see a ton um, i guess where i'm going with it is i'd like to at least see the warranty i'd like to give you the authorization to proceed with it maybe think it through a little bit more but to me i would be leaning that way Right now, I, I get you know, just thinking out loud. Right now, if a student brings in a broken screen where it looks like it's clearly their fault, do they share any part of that? They share half the cost. So, is it possible that you could offer a student the accidental warranty on Absolutely. this or something, and they could pick up a portion of it or something? It just would seem like there'd be a way that a and maybe that's an option if they're going to take them home or something like that. That it would be. Maybe it's, it's you know twenty six dollars for a screen, and twenty six to thirty on a keyboard based on availability. Availability. Okay. Um, those are our average breaks right there. So, it's, you know, they're paying like twelve dollars and you know, change for a broken screen paying half of it. You know, or I could offer them fifty dollar insurance per year. I it's guess. So the purchase price was one hundred and sixty-seven thousand. How much? What was the number? I would make a motion then that we would um, purchase the Chromebooks and laptops at a purchase price of one hundred and sixty-seven thousand, and that we would give the technology department the discretion in the business office to pursue the warranties. You said for about thirty-six thousand dollars, up to that amount, and if it comes in less, or you come up with an agreement that you think would make sense, you can certainly spend less. But I, that would be my motion: is for sure on the purchase, and then up to that amount for the extended warranty. Do we have to purchase the extended warranty up front, or can we get it while it's still under the factory warranty? Well, I that that includes accidental, and so there's four mm -hmm. years of accidental in that, and then three years of okay. like the general. You know, if the battery goes or the motherboard goes because it comes with the one year already mm -hmm. so, but i believe all these uh quotes i got were an upfront pay the full four years um to get it okay i'll, I'll second time we have a motion and we have a second thank you uh, any further discussion Yes. Mr. Mahal? So for me, it's really about, you know, having spent four years asking for the same amount of information to get something like this moving forward. Um, at the same time, I guess, supporting some of the issues that the teachers group brought to our attention. We get blamed for a lot of things that we do, um, being told that class splits and, and shared classes are a function of the budget. It's really a choice that we make as far as well, how we decide to spend money. Um, so my vote is no. Mr. Rudy? 
Can you clarify the motion or reread the motion? Um, to approve the phone books and lamp tasks for the $167,000 and give the tech department and the business office the opportunity to pursue warranties. $36,000. $36,000. No. Mr. Hazelhurst? Yes. Mr. Harley? Yes. Mr. Kinzer? Yes. Motion passes, I believe. Thank you, folks. And that brings us to board goals. Um, I spoke with Mike a little bit. Or do you want Go to ahead. I spoke with Mike a little bit. We still have to finalize our board goal discussion. And we have had our initial meeting with the admin. We, I think, are through with the staff and teacher meetings. And um, now we need to coalesce those. And merge those strategic together. planning. Yep. And strategic planning, yes. So my initial thought was that I would be presenting to you guys, do you want to have another special meeting where we get together and hash that out? Because I'm assuming it's going to take quite a while. Mike proposed, which is another option, um, that he and I sit down with all of those, see the commonalities, create some goals, and present those <coughs> goals in a regular meeting, which we could still have a great deal of discussion, but at least we would have already have something. Um, and you ha all have access to the, you all have a copy of the um, notes, or you soon will, of the notes from all the staff meetings, and maybe we can put something together for strategic planning. Do you guys have any desire, one way or another, to meet during a special meeting with Mike and anybody else? I guess it would be an open meeting, anybody else who wanted to, to, to finalize that and turn that into an official document to be approved at the next board meeting. Or would you rather Mike and I sit down and hash through that? It and our makes, thought was, is it if makes we no matter to me. took that information and see if we could come up with some common threads, formulated some goal verbiage, and bring it to the board and say, what do you think? Is this what you're hearing? Is this what you're seeing? Um, a lot of the kind of the verbiage stuff is done, but the board could kind of finalize and tweak it how they want. I'm fine with you guys working working it out together unless there's other people in the district or who want to have input on it honestly I mean, if there's people that want to have input on it, I'm not fine with it. and like I said I, I just assumed we would be having another special meeting uh, and then at, at the board meeting after that we'd be approving whatever that is but it doesn't it can be whatever you guys want it to be save you the time and effort. Mike and I can save you the time and effort unless you really want to sit down and do board goal writing. <coughs> it happens fairly quick, doesn't it, Allison? That special meeting was fairly expedient and right to the point. So, Tom, do you have a, a feeling one way or another? Okay, Carl? Or whomever. It, it wouldn't even have to be just Mike and I. It could Somebody wants to join us. Maybe one other person. It could only be on one other person. If somebody wants to replace me, sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I think that uh, consolidating forces is a good idea. Okay. All right. Mary? I agree with Carl. I think getting something kind of consolidated and, and together before we all meet would be Ed? Um, then we will go ahead and move forward with that, and I will maybe see if you guys, uh, if anybody else is interested in joining in, and if you all say no, I wouldn't be surprised, but if somebody's very, really chomping at the bit to be in on that, we could have one other person there without needing a special meeting, or call an official meeting. Um, all right, folks, that brings us to new business, the May 2019 bills. Do I have a motion and a second? I had approval. a, um, yes. I had a, it's my month to review the bills. I looked them over there. They okay. look good to me, so I would make a motion to approve the bills as presented. We have a motion. Second. And we have a second. 
Roll call, please, Kelly. Mr. Mulholland? Yes. Mr. Rudy? Yes. Mr. Wiesenhorst? Yes. Mr. Beverly? Yes. Mr. Kinzer? Yes. Mrs. Maxey? Yes. Motion passes. That brings us to the approval of the school calendar. Uh, yes. My apologies. I spaced there for a second. Um, so this has been a never-ending process. Uh, the calendar does reflect the 176 uh, student days that are now required by the state. Um, the calendar also has its parent conferences in there. It has um, uh, uh, institute days. And like I said earlier, it does include the late starts. Um, I'm at a point now where I really want to get the, uh, the calendar out to the parents. It's really pretty similar to a calendar we've always had in there with just two minor, um, two minor changes. If you'll notice that we have extended conferences only one time in the fall and one time in the spring, but a uh, longer period for the conferences to happen on one day. And then we've got the four late starts in there. But the general start time, the two weeks at Christmas, the spring break are all very similar to what we've done the past few years. So looking for the board to approve that. I'll make a motion to approve the calendar as presented. Yes. Mr. Hazelhorst? Yes. Mr. Kinzer? Yes. Mrs. Maxey? Yes. Mr. Mulholland? Yes. Mr. Riverley? Yes. Enjoy the account. And you agreed, so thank you. Okay. All right. Motion passes. That brings us to health insurance renewal. Questions for Melissa? <clears throat> if not, do I have a motion and a second? Make a motion uh, to approve the renewal of Blue Cross Blue Shield, Dearborn National, Delta Dental, Delta Vision, as provided by Arthur Gallagher. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? A motion by Maxi and a second by Hazel first. Roll call, please, Kelly. Mr. Hazelhorst? Yes. Mr. Beverly? Yes. Mr. Kinzer? Yes. Mrs. Maxey? Yes. Mr. Mulholland? Yes. Mr. Rudy? Yes. Motion passes. Brings us to the amended budget. Yes, this is something that we have to do this year. Melissa's got a little more detail on it, but it's really uh, it's got everything to do with us making sure that we move the right amount of money before the end of the year, um, which we planned for with our bus purchases. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
doing my thing. Air, I measure your head in the same way, about 37 maybe. Debt service, this is one of the areas that we're going to need to amend uh, because of that abatement of the one we decided to do with the tax levy. So we're about 300,000 <coughs> um, we're going to amend the budget to include that in there so that we're in um, the planners for that. And you can see how that can make dip down below what we have budgeted. And then this is our amendment that will increase the bond budget by 300,000. Okay. Um, transportation fund was the other fund that we needed to look at. Um, we determined that we wanted to purchase the buses. Um, and so that has not, those came to be big bills this month. Um, so you'll see it's not reflected in our budget up here, but that was coming out here this month as well. Um, and so the two line items that I want to look at is the physical bus, which we talked about. Um, our bus repair and maintenance services, I've been shot this year. We've had some, some repairs on our buses just because of the older fleet. We're getting rid of a lot of the older buses, and so I hope that will come back in. Um, I'm hoping we'll have 50,000 next year, but I'd like to move both both that, um, just to capture that. Um, and you can see right now, transportation, we still have about 29% remaining, but once we purchase those buses, that will decrease significantly. Our IMRF Social Security Fund, um, this is all of our Medicare Social Security retirement fund there. Um, this one is big. Um, I don't know if it's going to be as well. And then capital projects. This is our sales tax money that we use for all the big stuff, like, which is this construction. Um, this one we pretty much spend. What our budget is, and we pretty much spend it from there as far as those big projects like this and stuff like that. As you can see, we have three percent left. But that's because we do all those separate projects in June, and so it's profitable. Our tort fund is all of our insurance, unemployment, compensation, um, our fire safety. Um, those are two smaller funds that we use very specifically for the two funds. So they're just kind of smaller funds. Our overall expenditures at that time, we have about 29% of the regular budget, we just spent about 7%. So I feel like we're right where we need to be, except for those two funds that we just need to alter. Any questions on that? I will be bringing the budget, um, that amount of budget to you guys. Any questions for Melissa? All right. And we're ready to move on to the next one. Yep, that's All it. Right. The next one is the superintendent evaluation tool. I just wanted to take an opportunity. Uh, we're supposed to discuss this in open session. Uh, if you would like, if you folks would like to amend, uh, make any changes to the evaluation tool that we used in this last cycle moving forward, I'd like Mike to see what the tool is going to be sooner rather than later. So uh, I wondered if anybody had any interest in amending that. Additions, deletions, we'll of course be adding whatever goals we come up with. That will be part one, if you will, this being part two or vice versa. Uh, but I wanted to give you guys the opportunity to uh, revisit that. And I also wanted to ask, is there any logic, you know, as we're finalizing goals in June, but goals were really supposed to be done like a couple months ago. Is there any logic in extending this out a little bit further and giving us more time and then just starting in August for the, the evaluation cycle and goal cycle and then ending it at the end of the year? I don't know who set the calendar to be what it is, but we, we like do... February through November-ish, sort of, December-ish, which is right smack dab in the middle of the year. And I just wondered if we should be, our goals for the up and coming year and your review should should cover that year, not like half of the years. Like last year when we did the goals, I thought it was hard because a lot of the goals we picked, um, like when we focused on uh, SAT, we focused on park, and I want to say we finalized like the goals in April or May. We had already taken the test for what those goals were. You know, um, I don't know that it changed any of our initiatives. Our initiatives were still probably focused the same way. Um, but I think it might depend on what goals we choose to look at and pick. Okay. And I'm sure the evaluation piece has got to do timing of how contracts sit too, because superintendent's contract will run from July 1 to June 30th. Okay. So, obviously, which my hope is, is not where you're wanting to go, but if you're looking to make a change, you 
typically would start to make that change a few months earlier before the end of the contract. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I think, I, I think that that's how the timing is set up. All right. That's my guess. Does anybody have any thoughts on the evaluation tool one way or another? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Should we give ourselves a month to look at it more closely and bring it up put it on the agenda for the next meeting, or are we just good to go? Okay. Tom, are you okay as is? Carl? <coughs> Okay. Mary? I don't it's I think it's fine. I don't have any Ed? Yeah, let's take it from and see where we are. Okay. Good. Okay. Easy enough. Caper and elementary field then. Yeah. Allison's brought this proposal forward. Allison, I'll let you go ahead and start. It's been something you've kind of had on the radar for a little while here. And so, um, yes. So, uh, Capron Elementary, when I started there four years ago, you know, one of the things I noticed was just our outside facilities for the kids and the community to use. And one thing um, is our ball diamond. Um, so, so this presentation is just our little field of dreams. Um, and, and I took a quote from you know, if you build it, he will come. You know, we've all seen that movie, I think, maybe. Um, and, and the idea is that, um, let's see, um, back it up to the, to the history a little bit. Um, okay, so there's an updated version of this. So the history, just to give you guys a little idea, um, uh, Jim, Coach Malvena was a PE teacher, a coach and mentor of countless students in the Northland School District from 1978 until 2010. Um, when he passed away, his family generously donated funds to Cabron Elementary School in the hopes that it would be used for uh, the students and families of Capron in a manner in which Coach would be remembered uh, for generations to come. And I've been working with uh, different uh, community organizations um, over the last few years to try and get this um, project to fruition. So now that time has come. Our project goal is to create a space for school children to play during PE class and recess, um, for local organizations to play and practice, and of course our families to use for fun. Um, the project plan um, is to grade the current field. If you've been out to Capron recently. Um, I, you know, there's there's more gopher holes and grass there than there is a, a, a ball diamond to play on. So you want to grade it and add some new lime uh, to install new fencing from home plate down the first and third base lines, and to erect a memorial sign that would be Capron Elementary Field of Dreams in memory of Jim Coach Mulvena. So our project plan, which is another slide that I've got in here, um, funds not used um, in the initial field restoration, the lime and the fencing for the baselines will be placed into our Capron activity account under the Mulvena, we'll keep it under the Mulvena fund at Capron as a source to maintain the field. Um, those of you who were part of that long range planning um, we had on the one thing is we do these wonderful things for our facilities and then there's nothing to keep them up. So part of this plan is to actually keep a little bit of money in the fund so that we can add new lime each year, do some treatments to make sure it doesn't become overgrown with weeds again. Um, and in the future um, to put up uh, a, a nice backstop. Um, the project, the cost of the project and a little updated from here. Um, this will cost the district zero. This is at no cost to the district. We have to date, I'm going to update that, um, received $3,900. Capron has received $1,350 from the family of Jim Mulvena to help fund an athletic PE, and I call it an opportunity. I didn't want to say a field or event. It, they just wanted something um, in his memory. 
Um, Capron PTO has donated $1,000 to be used on the ball diamond. And we have received funds from Capron Lions Club, North Blue Youth Sports, um, several anonymous community members and organizations um, who both, they have donated additional funds and will be donating their time to complete this project. So any questions on this? Basically, I'm bringing it to the board because this is school property and this is something we're, we want to do um, to honor coach as well as provide a facility for children to use and families to use both during the school day. And, um, I want to make sure that the board supports it. Does anybody have any reservations? Do you want to share what this why it hasn't been done until date? Um, I, it hasn't been done to date because I needed to get I've been working with, sometimes the youth sports program said they wanted to take it on. Um, I had Power Baseball, um, the Lions Club. I had um, two years in a row, I had a, a Boy Scout who wanted to earn his Eagle Scout. Um, to me, I want to do this. I met with the individual, gave him the time, because it takes a lot of time um, to plan and organize it. So two years in a row, um, I had an Eagle Scout Unfortunately, not be able to come up with a plan. So then this year I said, you know what, we're going to get this done. And so I reached out to uh, Brian Dahl, um, Art Vermet, those are names some of you might know. Um, we had conversations with our PTO, and everyone is in agreement <coughs> this needs to be done. So. This all is your time. This all is your tenure, Cameron. I mean, this money yes. was donated long before. It was. I mean, when this was first proposed, it was shot down by previous superintendent. And that's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, these kids need the, these kids need it. As you, as many of you know, our youth our youth sports programs are growing very quickly. They need ball diamonds to practice on, um, and and even play on. So this is again connecting with our community to, to create a facility that they that that's safe. Legitimate. Allison, just out of curiosity, what's your estimate for the different maintenance costs? Um, different maintenance costs. I'm going to go back on the slide that I got some notes on. Um, um, like dock fencing is, it's it's a quote of about twenty four hundred fifty dollars. Um, the lime, um, this year it'll be $200. So moving forward, um, I'd like to keep at least $200 for lime each year. Not no, I like to overshoot rather than undershoot. Um, so yeah, I'd like, I'd like to keep about $500 in the account if possible, and then continue to raise money to encourage the incoming principal for next year and the PTO um, just to keep kind of an earmarker there so you can keep an upkeep plus um, you know I, I keep hearing of more organizations that hear about this and want to be a part of it want to donate money um, so ideally we'll have that backstop um, the backstop is very costly um, like upwards of five thousand dollars so this is something that we need to keep um, but with the small amount of money I have now or the fund has now this I felt was a good start. Get those get those fences down the, the first and third base, and then um, clean up the field so it's usable. Has any outreach been done to reach all those people from seventy eight to two thousand ten who knew Coach and would be interested in ten twenty dollars organizing a benefit, asking. Might that be an option? I mean, we don't have to discuss that here, but I mean, I would just think that. There were plenty of people who knew Coach well enough that they'd go, like, yeah, if there were enough of us, it wouldn't be much money for each individual. And, and the great connection we have is uh, Art Vermette, who, I mean, the Vermette family has been in the district for a very long time. And so he has, you know, reached out to people. Uh, Dean Schultz, the custodian right now at Cape Run, he's got so many connections around so um, the idea of a fundraiser that I, I'm not going to say that's out of the question and, and part of why I put that quote in there, if you build it, you will come. 
um, is kind of we started and people start to see you know, that we're able to do something nice and keep it up and then they might ask more about it and that word of mouth. Thank you, Allison. I think you have the official thumbs up. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. And families and kids of people certainly appreciate your support. Very much. That brings us to the middle school summer school teacher. Yeah, this year we did have one summer school teacher that was going to help with uh, middle school students that um, needed to take summer school. We've had a few more kids now that are uh, potentially and even more that are going to qualify for summer school so we're looking to add a second teacher to help with summer school for our middle school students that struggled with grades thank you thank you very much for that does anybody have any questions for mike what, what happened i wish i could speak to it I, I i don't know i mean that's that number is higher than we wanted and like i said past trends have not been there um, I'm hesitant to yell a trend yet until we kind of stop and look at it, but that's not what we want to see, how many kids are failing. One of the numbers there, when you look at 62 and just having been a principal there, you've got, so like that's the potential number. You also have a lot of kids that are scrambling right now to make sure that their grades get up. So I don't anticipate that number being at 62, but um, um, I remembered very well working with parents and kids to make sure that they were staying on their grades and their uh, academics right up to the final day. So, but that number is still too high. So, um, I hope Mr. Lewis is listening. Sure. I have comments. That is a lot of students, and I, mean, I don't know if you want me to speak now or hold that And like I said, I, I haven't studied it to stare at the trend, and I'd hate to shoot out something there that if I'm not factual yet. But, um, but regard, I, regardless of the reason why, we still need the position. We, I mean, yeah. It, and maybe, maybe you need a little bit more time, and maybe you will be coming back with, to us with that information of the reason why. But regardless. We still need this. We need to accommodate those students yeah. for the summer based on our, our uh, administrative practice and policy. Does anybody have a motion? We'll have a discussion after. I move we approve addition of the school summer school teacher. Second. We have a motion and a second. Does anybody want to discuss it any further? Please, Kelly. Mr. Vanderly? Yes. Mr. Kinzer? Yes. Mrs. Maxey? Yes. Mr. Mulholland? Yes. Mr. Rudy? Yes. Mr. Hazelhurst? Yes. Motion passes. I want to ask the question what happens if they don't pass summer school, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> Thank Maybe you. you'll tell me later. Uh, all right. Let me, we need a motion and a second to adjourn to, to move to executive session. For the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees to the public body or legal counsel for the public body, including hearing testimony on a complaint lodged against an employee of the public body or against legal counsel for the public body to determine its validity, as well as collective negotiation matters between the public body and its employees or their representatives, or deliberations concerning salary schedules for one or more classes of employees, as well as the placement of individual students in special education programs or other matters relating to individual students. Do I have a motion and a second, please? So moved. Second. Motion by Maxie, a second by Rudy. Roll call, please, Kelly. Mr. Kinzer? Yes. Mrs. Maxie? Yes. Mr. Mohan? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Rudy? Yes. Mr. Hazelhorst? Yes. Mr. Gavily? Yes. Motion passes. After the dead people get up that pizza. Are yes, please. Okay. Folks, there's still a lot of not too help. old leftovers. Uh, please help yourself. And thank you for coming. If you don't stick around for the entire executive session, it was nice having people in the audience. Thanks, Nick. Thank you, folks.
a motion by Maxi, a second by Rudy. Roll call, please, Kelly. Mrs. Maxi? Yes. Mr. Mahon? I just feel like that if you're going to vote against something, that you ought to let people know and make sure that they understand why it is that you're voting against it. I'm really disappointed that my fellow board members don't understand the value that an employee has brought to the district internally and had the opportunity to work and make improvements to what's been done uh, to a school that's been grossly underserved. Um, very disappointed that we didn't promote somebody that's talented from within our own ranks to the position my vote to know. Stain. Mr. Kenzer? Yes. Motion passes. Mary, uh, Ms. Maxey, you have one more? Yes. I approve up to 13 sick bank days for Lisa Scribner contributed from any NDEA member for the remainder of the 2018-19 school year. Uh, do we have a second? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call, please, Kelly. Mr. Mulholland? Yes. Mr. Rudy? Yes. Mr. Hazelhurst? Yes. Mr. Haverly? Yes. Mr. Kenzer? Yes. Mr. Yes. Motion passes. Any other information? Announcements or information? Can I have a motion, motion adjourn. to adjourn? And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Good night, everybody.